And I'd like to welcome everybody today. It's Monday, May 11th, 2020. This is the Des Moines Weekly Real Estate Market Update. My name's Les Solgrove, and we are in week 19 of 2020, and about week, well, it feels like about week 500 of this COVID uh, virus stuff going on. Um, got a special guest today. I have with me Lance Hansen, and Lance is the president of the Des Moines Area Association of Realtors, and I'm going to hang on here. I'm going to stop the share for a second so we can introduce him, put his wonderful photo face up on the screen here. And um, Lance, I, as when I introduce you, I want you to tell me just a little bit about yourself, but uh, also, you know, as a, I was president of DMOR in 2011 and, and my year, you know, you went into that year thinking, you know, this is, this is the 100th year of Des Moines Area Association of Realtors. And I thought, well, that's going to be a great year. And of course it turned out totally opposite, just a, just an awful year. That was the year we lost Ashley Oakland. And, and I, I kind of feel for you in 2020 here, because I'm sure that, you know, you had a whole, a whole different set of ideas of what was going to happen this year and, and uh, kind of got overridden by, by coronavirus. But uh, anyway, you're doing a great job of staying in communication with agents. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Lance, and, and, um. Okay, I um, let's see. I got licensed in um, nineteen eighty seven, spring of nineteen eighty seven. In fact, uh, yeah, just uh, right about uh, May first was when I got licensed. So I guess uh, an anniversary has just flipped by. Uh, so yeah, uh, thirty three years of hanging around in the business. I've uh, worked for uh, two companies. Uh, so I, I don't switch a lot. And um, so I don't know. What else you want to know? <laughs> well, just, uh, you know, you've been in the, the what we call the chairs at Des Moines Area Association now for the last four or five years, getting ready for for your uh, spot in the sun here. And, and um, you know, I thought I'd invite you on today and, and just kind of ask you a couple questions uh, related to kind of real estate in mind of how, how the real estate business is changing this year based on coronavirus and, um, you know, kind of how many, do you know how many realtors we have right now in the Moines area? Yeah, I, I do. And, and just, I just want you to know, I love ha these happy hour um, <laughs> uh, meetings. So, so thanks for inviting me for that. That was good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're, um, we, we're around 2,500 depends on whether you take the affiliate members and put them in that mix. Um, Little below if we uh, if we don't, a little above if we do. So we're um, pretty pretty healthy size, and then also largest of course in Iowa. And based on the uh, new agents that I, I went to the meeting of, uh, there's just a, a whole ton of new ones coming in. So yeah. crazy. It is it is kind of crazy, isn't it? Uh, the real estate market is a business that a lot of people gravitate to in uh, different times, and so. Um, so with that kind of in mind, what are some of the biggest challenges you see uh, to the real estate industry as a whole as a result of this coronavirus? Well, I, I think the right now and going forward, the biggest challenge is going to be um, uh, unemployment. Mm -hmm. um, people that are <clears throat> that are out of work, um, and it, it, you know it's a it's a trailing type indicator trailing type scenario that right now things are going along pretty swimmingly, <clears throat> excuse me, but at some point um, that's going to catch up to us and we're going to have, you know, a month, maybe two months of, of down. Um, and that's, that's what concerns me the most is like, are we ready for that? Are we, do we have the things in place to, uh, to get through that part? Yeah, there's certainly some changes uh, in the works coming, I think. And, and you're right, unemployment is going to be a big issue. I, I, initially, I kind of thought maybe this coronavirus wouldn't have affected us quite as much, but I think there's going to be some some lingering effects. Um, mm -hmm. and hopefully, real estate will lead us out of that. Um, so how do you feel like realtors in general are adjusting? What are they doing differently now that they uh, were doing before? What are some things that you see changing? Um 
Well, one thing, realtors are amazing folks. They're, they're very good. I mean, they spend their whole career and their lives uh, adapting to circumstance. I mean, that's what we do for a living, basically. And so I, I, think, I think, generally speaking, the agents have done a good job of, of making this work. And there was a little craziness right at the beginning it's like, okay, how does this work? What are we going to do? How does this happen? And so <clears throat> now I hear about, you know, they're carrying around, um, you know, a disinfectant spray. They've got gloves with them. They wear masks. Some of them have face shields. They I look, I look like Kim Reynolds here talking with my hands like that. <laughs> uh, but, but just the things that they're doing and they, when they call for appointments, they ask for doors to be left open, all the lights to be left on just mitigating the any transfer, any, you know, touching of surfaces and things like that in a showing. And then, you know, with buyers, you know, taking separate vehicles, getting this, you know, some social distancing that they can, um, you know, and then um, taking all the precautions. Sure. And, and kind of that same question along the lines of how are buyers and sellers adjusting, just as we are trying to not touch things, um, how are you seeing or hearing uh, you know, the buyers and sellers, how are they reacting? Well, I, I, I think right now, I think buyers are ahead of the game, um, probably because they, they have such a motivation with interest rates right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you are a homeowner right now or want to be a homeowner, uh, you, you know, if you look at the interest rates, I mean, I just locked in for a refi and I just did my loan in January. So um, it, the rates are so good. So the buyers are, they're more motivated right now to do something and you can see that. And then sellers are, are trailing that a little bit yeah. of, of wanting to open their home up to somebody, you know, come in and like that. I, I think, I think they'll come along, um, you know, as they're assured of the process and that, but right now it's, it's, it's working, um, albeit with changes. <laughs> Yeah, well, and I agree. I think you're right that uh, the sellers are kind of trailing along, and we'll see that here in a minute when I kind of go over a couple of the, the latest market stats. Um, so kind of maybe the next, the last question for you, um, what changes do you foresee long-term in our industry? Obviously, everything kind of has a cause and effect, but what do you see long-term changing now because of this? Um. <clears throat> Excuse me, my my wife just came in to tell me she was leaving. Uh, <laughs> not so, for good. Uh, no, well, so far, no. Um, <laughs> you never know, um, you know, about that. But I think, generally speaking, um, you know, it, you can't unring a bell. And so, for sellers, um, they are seeing now the the services that are being provided. They're seeing the virtual tours and the, and the, all, all the different types of technology that's being used in the business now to get homes on the market, to be able to have buyers see them, put them out on, you know, not only our MLS, but the other, pro, uh, the other uh, programs that are out there that have availability. Uh, and, and so I don't think that's going to change a lot. I think sellers, when they see something new, they tend to think, hey, that I should have that. And so I don't think that's gonna change. I think you're gonna be required to be much more virtual um, with sellers and their marketing um, uh, about that. The other part with buyers is that I think that the idea as we work from home, uh, buyers are, are quote, working from home in the purchase too. So they're seeing a lot of those virtual tours and narrowing their field down a little bit so that the amount of homes they need to see are, are lessened and agents are doing a good job of helping them with that. Yeah, we, we kind of got dragged and kicked and screaming into the 20th century or 21st <laughs> century back when we went from uh, the books to the computers, which I, I've been in the business coming up on 30 years, so I'm not too far behind you, but we yeah. both have that pain of knowing what the books were versus the multiple listing service. And, yes. And yeah. uh, it, so it, it, I do think we different. have seen change. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, um, any last bits of advice or encouragement that you can uh, give to us as realtors and to the buyers and sellers out there? 
Well, obviously, just be safe. I, I mean, the, this um, there are there are very good formats with which you can show and sell and work and list and all those things. They're very good formats of what you can do to mitigate your risk. Um, and and it's, it's like, you know, our safety issues that we've been working on for so long about identifying your, your buyers and, you know, those things. It's just an extension of that is that not only we're we identifying the buyers now, we, we uh, you know, prepare properly, take the, take the um, uh, systems and put them in place that are available with how you show and how you bring buyers around and what you do in your business. Uh, and so I think that's, that's all just, just coming around. Listen, the, the bottom line here is that as our system comes back to life, real estate is such an integral part of our general makeup um, in, in you know, GDP from a national level and just people. Um, it's, it is huge and it's highly important that we make that avenue uh, open up as much as possible for buyers and sellers and agents to work um, so that we move that part of it forward. That's part of our job. I mean, it, look, every time we sell a house, um, it, it actually makes work for multiples of people. Um, that's how we're going to get out of this. Yeah, I think the economic impact, uh, the, the most recent thing I've seen is like $58,000 of economic impact for every purchase uh, or sale yeah. in the state of Iowa. Yeah. That's in, huge. In a nutshell, they tell me that every two houses that are sold creates a job. Yes, that's, that's so, very good. So, you know, uh, and we're going to have to create some jobs. There's some going away. There's no doubt about Beside, that. You know, what the impact is, I don't know how we're at in the, in the wealth chain uh, that this will happen. Obviously, the first part of this has all been based on uh, retail workers, restaurant workers, that type of thing, which tend to be paid less um, and are affected more by this kind of thing. But you have to understand if we shut the front end off, it's hard to, to move forward through that process of selling and buying and selling and buying right. in, in that chain that moves forward. So yeah. that, that I look forward to repairing that chain. Well, Lance, thank you so much for, for being here today and, and especially for leading us uh, as president of Des Moines Area Association of Realtors this year. Um, again, it's not an easy job in normal times and, and multiply what we've got going right now. I, you know, I just want to thank you. I've been in your shoes and, and a lot of us have been in your shoes and we just really want to thank you for your dedication to this uh, organization. So I appreciate that. And if hanging on is uh, for dear life is leading, then I'm all over that, <laughs> you know? So, and, and again, I appreciate the happy hour call and uh, I appreciate you uh, a lot. Very good. Well, uh, you're welcome. I hope you'll stick around here. I'm going to load up. No, I'm, uh, I want to see my PowerPoint here and, and we're going to go over a few uh, stats and graphics that's kind of hit for the rest of uh, since last week. And um, some of the stuff we talked about is kind of appropriate because we're going to talk a little bit about cause and effect. And, and um, I'm going to start this week with the real estate dashboard, which Everybody that looks at this goes, holy cow. But if you're a stat person, man, this is, this is like the golden, golden uh, egg here. It's got every single thing on it about our market that's happened in the past week. And I'm going to focus on a couple of these today. Number one is in, kind of up here in this center top here point. We hit a milestone May 5th, which, which was last Monday. So this is last week's stats. So as of last Monday, we surpassed 4,000 closed sales year to date that's combined all of our four different categories resale uh, and new construction both uh, single family and condo townhome and to give you an idea we're, we're ahead of last year last year in 2019 we didn't hit the 4,000 mark until about May 14th so that tells us that we had a nice lead up into um, 2020 uh, before COVID-19 kind of hit us and I kind of expect this to kind of maybe maybe catch up, but I think we're still going to be uh, right at where we were last year based on um, kind of what the, the market's feeling like here. 
Um, another topic over here that I want to bring your attention to, this is the housing shortage or overage um, count. And this is a report that I created this year because I was trying to figure out, gosh, we always say we need more houses. We need more houses on the market. And I wanted to put a number to that. Um, and so the way I defined this was if, if you kind of look over here on the right side, there's under single family new construction here, you see that the housing shortage and overage says it's zero. And what that means is that at 935 um, homes on average uh, of homes for sale right there, um, that, that means that we have just enough inventory for buyers to be able to find enough homes to sell, to buy, and sellers out there, new construction has got enough homes to sell so that we're in that what we call a balanced or an even market. Um, you can see over here on the resale side, we're in a seller's market, which means that we have more buyers than we have sellers. And in order for us to get our inventory levels up to this balanced market, uh, like we do in new construction, today it would take almost 2,700 more homes on the market than we currently have. Now, I don't want you to think that this is saying that, you know, oh my God, the market's falling apart and we, you know, we're, we're short listings. We are short of inventory. And this has been a situation we've been in now for the last five, six, seven years. Well, actually, ever, pretty much ever since uh, the the market crash of 2008. And um, so it's kind of a, uh, in a cycle process, we'll see this number dip. And in fact, let's take a look at that here. This this is a spaghetti graph. And what it basically shows you is from January through the end of May or through the middle of May so far, um, the four different categories that we that I track. Uh, single family resale is this blue line that is plunging down. And you notice these numbers right here in the middle. This is about that week 10 where uh, coronavirus really kind of started to hit us. And this is my I like to put a little point in time so we kind of have a, a, a mark of what happened after that. And you can kind of see that we we went through a period of time here, uh, and we just focus on the single family resale, where we went, we dropped down our inventory shortage dropped down to 2,500. And at which point it kind of pushed back up. And what the reason why we started to see a buildup of inventory was because that's about the time that the home buyers really started to pull back. They didn't stop buying, but they pulled back from buying. And so that allowed our, our home inventory to kind of grow a little bit, not a whole lot, because you can see we were still, you know, upwards of 1500 homes short. Um, but over the last, oh, probably 30 days, middle, middle of April till now, we've started to see this trending go back down. And we're currently at almost 2700 homes. In fact, we were over 2700 homes um, short of the inventory um, as of just earlier this last week, but we're, as of Sunday, it was 2696. And if I lay like a trend line over this, you can kind of see that we're kind of heading back into some sort of normalcy <clears throat> in this. And what we'd see is this housing shortage will, will dip until about June or July 1st when our market peaks and then inventory starts to climb again. And so uh, we saw this initial little peak where it kind of started back up, and that was uh, coronavirus related. And so I think we're just kind of back on track again now, um, and, and we'll know over the next couple of weeks how that kind of works here. So the other graphic I want to talk about on this, on this uh, dashboard are these three charts across the bottom, weekly listings added, pendings, and, and closed sales. And so I'll stack those up here on a larger graphic so you can kind of see what they're doing here. Um, one thing you'll notice here this week, we for the first time, and this is a good sign that the market's picking up as well, last week we had 315 homes come on the market. This was the number of actual homes added to the MLS on top of what we currently have. And if you look down here under pending sales, we actually had an exact same number go off. So um, the buyers out there are, are just chomping at, at our inventory um, at an even pace. So 315 on, 315 off. Our market balance is kind of <clears throat> staying right uh, pretty even there. Um, we have more than 300 homes, obviously, for sale. <clears throat> Close to 20, uh, I think it's well, well over about 10 times that amount. Um, the numbers over here to the left are the highs 
year to, for the year to date. So at one point in time, as spring was starting to <clears throat> really uh, come on, uh, week 10, which is the week, coincidentally, that coronavirus started to hit, the real estate market was really starting to pick up. And we had 426 homes hit the market that week. And you can kind of see that it's it's dipped after that. I think we're going to see this number increase over the next two or three weeks as weather uh, turns and hopefully more more counties are opened up uh, for business with our governor. And, and um, the 321 here under pending sales is, see, we had 426 on week 10. Week 11, we had 321 homes go under contract. So buyers were really waiting and they were ready to buy. And, and of course, you can see that's where that, where they kind of took that little pause. So uh, the, the closed sales, you know, we're, we closed 158 sales last week. Um, and that's pretty common that first weekend. But the high that we've had so far this year is 225 sales. And that happened uh, as a result of probably a lot of this business that happened over here just prior to COVID. So um, just kind of a fun little chart. The the squiggly line is what we did last year. So it kind of gives you an idea of, of how we compare to, to 2019. So again, that's just kind of a fun little chart to kind of watch. And I'll kind of refer back to that over time here. So um, pending sales. I Every time I talk about pendings, my, my comment is always, this is the number that you really want to watch because this is the number of homes that were on the market that went under contract. And um, I'm going to take this graphic this week and expand it out because we have a tendency to look at these numbers a little too close and you start to go, well, guys, it dipped down a little bit. It's back up. And we're just barely ahead of last year. If you look at it really too close, you really can't get the big picture. So let's do this. Let's take, you can see there's the trend line. I think we're back on our trend. But let's go back out here and look at pending sales going all the way back to 2009. And you can see that over the last uh, 11 years, we've seen this increase in, in buyers buying homes that are going under contract. And this is going to be kind of a little history lesson here. Um, if we look back here in 2009, you notice that all the other years kind of has either a peak or a nice little uh, top and then it goes back down. And 2009, you can see that we had this little area right here that was kind of, uh, I call it defib for lack of a better terms. And this was as a result of that 2008 recession. This was the after effects of the 2008 recession. Buyers were starting to come back into the market. And of course, that was a real estate related recession um, that, was, that was actually caused uh, by mortgage lending practices. And you, what happened next was this sharp point up here. That was a huge jump that year. Well, that was what I call the medicine. That's when the federal home uh, subsidies uh, for home buyer incentives were introduced. If you recall back then, we had $7,500 uh, home buyer credits and it turned into $8,000 credits. And um, it's really, it has the same effect as taking medicine and putting medicine into the marketplace. It did its job, but um, it was kind of an artificial uh, stimulus. And so we go along here from 2011, 2012, 2016, 2018, all the way to where we are today. But before we get to 2020, uh, there's one little mark here I want to point out. There are other things that can affect our, the home buyers in the real estate market. And this is the year 2018 going into the fall and we all know what happened in 2018 in the fall we had our mid-year elections and after our 2016 elections uh, you know 2018 mid-years was a was a pretty big year for elections and home buyers kind of really kind of held off and said okay what's going to happen maybe i'll hold off and see how the mid-year election happens and and how the economy is really going and so that's just an example of how mid-year elections can kind of, um, you know, stall a marketplace here. So we bring us all the way up to today. And of course, this is where COVID-19 is. And if you recall the last graphic, it was showing some kind of a little, a little bump and everything. But if you look at it from all the way out here, 30,000 square feet out in outer space, you can see that right now COVID-19 is really having I don't want to call it a blip because it's not really a blip, but look at that. We are, we're back on trajectory. We're, you know, we had a little pause 
and we're, we're growing. And I think that we're going to see um, the rest of this year kind of surprise us um, unless something else happens within our marketplace. So um, again, don't focus too closely on, on what happens when you're looking so close. You've got to get back out and kind of expand out and, and see what happened there. The for sale, uh, homes for sale inventory levels here, um, again, going back to 2009, keeping that same theme of looking far out. You know, this is, as I was telling, telling Lance earlier, this is kind of, we've, we've been used to having this shortage. In 2017, we kind of started this trend back upwards here. And I would say that if we didn't have uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus, we would be right here at this point in time, we'd be back up uh, well on our way to increasing our, in increasing our inventory. Um, but right now it's, it's just kind of, you know, holding off, kind of holding its own. It's not dropping off, but it's also not, not really rising too much. And um, what, what you can see is when we look at it just from the year to date level here, and then we overlay um, the 2019, you know, this, we did cross over in mid, mid April. And what I do expect is for this number to start to rise and, and uh, rise all the way up through the fall here. So I think we're, we're on the right track. It's just going to be a, a different year for us. Uh, months of inventory is also a great number that we've kind of looked at over the years. And 2.6 over here under March, that's when this all kind of started. 2.2 uh, months is where we are today. And what that simply means, that 2.2 means is that if no new homes come on the market uh, anymore, it would take us just over two months to sell out of everything we have for sale. So that's that months of inventory number. And as you can see that when the buyers kind of backed away from the market slightly, the months of inventory kind of went up because if they weren't eating up that inventory, it was just taking up a little bit more uh, time to go. So we had a little bit more time uh, to sell that inventory. Um, but what's real exciting is if we overlay now 2019, this is the black line. Look at this. We are exactly where we were last year at this same time with months of inventory. So this might be, this just might be the first sign that some of our market is back, um, you know, back to normal as if we can call it normal again here. Um, so if we kind of trail along next, the next few weeks and follow our months of inventory overall, like we did last year, that'll make me real happy and make all of us feel like we're, we're kind of uh, on that road to recovery. The last graphic we always talk about every week is the open house counts. And this week, open house counts were down just a little bit. Um, it was Mother's Day weekend. And Mother's Day weekend will traditionally um, drop our, our uh, weekly open house counts a little bit. And in particular, uh, the 67, which represents the resale homes. We had 102 last week. I wholly expect next week to be back above 500 and maybe even closer to 550, uh, you know, with new construction and resale back for week 20. But, um, um, you know, hopefully everybody was out enjoying mom this weekend. So that's probably why we had a little bit lower open house count. So uh, next week, we'll be back at noon on Tuesdays. Now, Tuesdays is the official day for this. I had a couple of conflicts on Tuesdays. Uh, but we'll be moving forward every Tuesday at this point forward, unless something happens. Uh, the URL, the web that you uh, joined us with today is the same one that you will join us with each week. And, you know, I just, again, want to thank Lance for, for joining me today. Um, you know, I think I like this idea of having somebody every once in a while. I've got uh, Linda Westergaard uh, scheduled here in two weeks. And Linda's going to talk a little bit about how, the city of Des Moines uh, is is coping with COVID-19 and maybe how that's going to affect real estate, you know, with some of the traffic repair, you know, the street repairs and uh, opening parks and things like that. So uh, look forward to having Linda with us here in a couple of weeks. And uh, Lance, do you have anything else you want to say before we sign off for the day? No, just thank you for uh, doing this every week. It's, it's valuable information. I know people look uh, look to you uh, to provide this information and, uh, and and just always get an idea of where we're at at any given point. So uh, I, again, Les, I, I appreciate you. Really, thank you. Thank you very much, Lance. And thanks for being here today. Um, 
And uh, if you haven't already uh, looked at the end of month for review for April, you can get to that at blog.simplydesmoines. It's the top post on that uh, on that blog website, and you can kind of see what happened over the whole month of April, and that's out there uh, the whole time. And of course, I'm always found at uh, Simply Des Moines Stats on Facebook. It's where just the stats are. Uh, that's probably if all you're into is the the graphics and charts, and you're a geek like me, then just go to facebook.com slash Simply Des Moines Stats and Lance, thanks again. Uh, everybody that uh, you know that joined me, we will uh, record this and put this out for consumption. And I just appreciate your time this week. And guys, stay safe, and we'll talk to you again next week.